Hello YouTube. Today we're going to have a look at electrical systems. I'm very, very excited about the electrical system. And uh, a word of warning, I am not an electrician. In fact, I've got three electrical engineers who are going to be helping me with this. One's a registered electrician who's going to help me with the uh, 230 volt side of things. I've got another electrical engineer who's an expert in solar panels. He's going to help with the wiring of the solar panels. And, and then uh, we've got another friend who's an expert in lithium batteries. And uh, he's going to help me install the lithium cells. And uh, get them all wired up with a battery management system. So I'm just going to have a run through of the system that I've got planned so far. And you can see what I'm planning. Now this is a little bit different from uh, most normal van conversions in that we are going to be running a 24 volt system here and uh, I've got a few reasons for that. Number one, 24 volt is uh, more efficient especially for the sort of size of system and currents that we're dealing with here for this van. Uh, there was also a price consideration. Uh, the equipment I wanted to get it was actually cheaper to go for a 24 volt system rather than the 12 especially uh, because of the easy solar box there, which we'll uh, talk about in a minute. And I also wanted to run 24 and 12 volt items, so it didn't really make a huge difference. Uh, we'd need a converter one way or the other, so uh, 24 volts more efficient and cheaper, so we decided to go for that. I'd say if you're doing uh, a normal size system or anything a bit smaller, 12 volt would be probably easier. The biggest disadvantage of the 24 volt system is it's harder to charge the batteries directly off the van's 12 volt power system. So just keep that in mind. So let's have a look at the system here. So the batteries. I've pictured here Victron Energy lithium batteries. However, we won't be using them. They cost an absolute fortune. Instead, I've got my friend uh, Jason. He's going to put together some lithium uh, cells together for me and uh, a custom BMS for them as well, or battery management system. So we're going to have uh, 300 amp hours at 24 volts, which is equivalent of 600 amp hours at 12 volts, or somewhere around that figure. Off there will be a circuit breaker for the batteries. It'll either be 100 amps or 150 and we may or may not need a switch. I'm not entirely sure. Maybe the circuit breaker is enough. We don't actually need a separate switch as well. Moving up, we've got the Victron BMV 700 and that includes in the box a shunt. Which, So this is a battery monitor and it will measure the... Uh, it will tell you how full or how much energy has been used out of the batteries and it does so in a very accurate way, far more accurately than just measuring the voltage across the batteries. So the shunt comes in the box with the uh, with the display unit and together they uh, act as the battery monitor. The battery monitor is the one thing that doesn't come in the CZ Solar box and uh, this is by Victron again. This is a 24 slash 3000 slash 70 which means it's a 24 volt system. It's got a 3000 VA, which is equivalent to 2400 watt inverter, and a 70 amp charge controller. And that's an MPPT charge controller, and it's exactly the same one as you'd buy from Victron separately, and it's literally just bunged in the box and wired up together with all the other things. So that's the main advantage of this box. It is pre-wired. You can see we've got the color controller, which is uh, normally a separate purchase. Uh, but with this model of Easy Solar, it's included. You've got circuit breakers, all pre-wired, and inside there is the inverter, and that's all wired into the solar charge controller, and they're all connected together. We're going to be feeding the system with uh, three 300 watt or 305 watt panels. So uh, that's what I've got room for on the roof. Here's the circuit diagram for the Easy Solar. 
So you can see the um, color controller there and the uh, solar panels and the battery and the MBPD controller. This is the inverter. It's got a thing called power assist, which means if our AC circuits up here try and draw too much power than our shore power provides, for example, if you just plugged into a normal 10 amp socket, uh, the power assist can kick on and combine the battery power with AC power to supply the required current. So it's pretty clever. It's got residual current device built in, which is a legal requirement for New Zealand. So the beauty of this system is all my electrician friend needs to do is wire up uh, the power plugs into the AC outlets. They already have the breakers all wired, so it'll be quite a simple job from. We're going to have quite a few power points throughout the van to run all the systems. Uh, slightly unusually, I'm going to be running a 230 uh, volt fridge along with the microwave. And uh, we've talked about the fridge before. We've got entertainment unit with TV, display and stereo. Not quite sure if those wattages are actual usage figures. We've got uh, electric blanket, dishwasher probably won't be happening now because of the they weigh 30 kilograms and I'm running out of uh, uh, payload in the van. Water heater, so a 700 watt color font, which is basically a little hot water cylinder. So that's going to be relay controlled from the Victron box. And what that means is once the batteries are full and we've still got solar power, it can turn on the hot water heater and use any spare energy to heat up the water. So that'll work well in summer. I don't think it'll work at all in winter, but we've also got a diesel water heater which is going to be heating up that same tank. So On the bench top there we're going to have things like uh, battery chargers, induction cooker maybe, uh, which will be useful in summer especially. Pressure cooker, very efficient way to cook. And there's also an option of shore power plugs and these will only operate if you're actually plugged into shore power. Not sure if I actually need them. All right, let's have a look at the 24 volt system. And that leads on to the 5 volt system and the 12 volt system. So the 24 volt system, up the top there, we've got our 5 volt converter and USB plugs. And that'll run a few basic things such as the uh, Hue bridge, which will run the lighting system. And we've got iPhone, iPad, and Raspberry Pi power as well. Our water pump and our heater, and I'll probably put them on separate circuits, but uh, they, the air heater, of course, isn't actually using 1.4 amps. It's a diesel heater, uh, and that power is simply needed to pump the diesel into the heater. We've got our lighting systems, which are natively 24 volt, and we've got a Orion DC to DC converter, which will uh, run our 12 volt system. This DC to DC converter is isolated, which means if there's a short circuit in the 12 volt system, it won't affect the 24 volt system and vice versa. They are physically isolated from each other. This is also quite important because I've already got a the van's 12 volt system is earthed to the van so you don't want to short that with this 12 volt system which is separate. So the 12 volt system we're going to be running fans for some reason all the fans you can buy are all 12 volt only you could not buy 24 volt versions. The oven is 24 volt 12 volt sorry we've got the water heater again it's just fueling the water heater and we could buy a 24 volt version of that however it costs a few hundred dollars extra and I don't really need it and then we've got Apple TV which will run HomeKit and modem and Wi-Fi which will uh, be running all the time so there we go that's the overview of the system uh, just to reiterate I'm not an electrician and I'm certainly not an expert at electronics 
So this is uh, something I've pieced together with the help of uh, friends who are experts in these things.